story is different uh, in uh, USA and in the rest of the world. Uh, the rest of the world, I mean uh, Europe and uh, Australia, basically, but also Latin America, but especially Europe and Australia, the midline are in a great moment of success, especially the short midlines. Mm -hmm. Also because we are simultaneously using, both in Australia and in Europe, uh, the old uh, tra traditional uh, conventional midline, which are more than 20 centimeters, so 20, 25 centimeters, uh, and the new short midlines. Uh, who are really two different uh, devices which deserve uh, differentiation because they have different indication, they have different duration, different technical insertion, different complications. And uh, the, the midline, uh, the old-fashioned midline or mid-clavicular are still going strong, especially in Spain, in UK, in Italy, um, with always the concern of being used properly only for peripherally compatible solutions, uh, but uh, the real uh, focus now is on the uh, short midlines, which are probably the, the most uh, rapidly uh, rising uh, device on the market, Venus Access device on the market. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see, for instance, my hospital where the from uh, zero to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 per year. This is uh, the, the entity, the magnitude of, of the rise for the short midlines. Short midlines, they erode, so to speak, the field uh, of uh, the short canvas. They are uh, a terrific uh, replacement uh, of having the patient uh, uh, restarting many, many short canvas during its hospitalization. So they have uh, uh, their role basically in the emergency room and in, in the hospitalized patient. On the contrary, the standard old conventional midline, the midclavicular, they will keep the role in palliative care, basically, and in some uh, kinds of OPAT, uh, outpatient antimicrobial therapy, if the antibiotic is compatible with the peripheral route. And uh, in the USA, it's different. In USA, they abandoned the midline and they have rediscovered the midline as uh, as a short midline, but uh, they call it midline with uh, no short midline. So that if you look at the literature, there's always great confusion because depending on where the, the paper comes, comes from, uh, when they say midline, it might be indicating uh, completely different uh, uh, vascular access devices. Now there is a, a very nice uh, paper from Australia, mm -hmm. which deals with this classification. Uh, there is a new classification by Wokova and by Gavashet, uh, which will be adopted, uh, I think, also in Europe, because we are working on uh, these uh, guidelines uh, for, for the classification and for the use uh, of peripheral access device, uh, where this, uh, this uh, differentiation between short canvas, long canvas, and uh, uh, standard midlines will be clear. Well, um, we've been using midlines uh, since uh, the beginning of this century, and uh, with, together with peaks. Uh, and we were using traditional midlines, uh, ultrasound guided, uh, uh, with uh, also in hospitalized patients. And then very rapidly we stopped because uh, uh, the cost effectiveness, cost effectiveness in the hospitalized patient was uh, reduced. On the contrary, we uh, still uh, we are still using it in, in uh, or non-hospitalized patient uh, who need the peripherally compatible uh, solutions for months. Okay. Uh, when we got the the short peripheral canvas, the long peripheral canvas, the mini midlines, uh, uh, we reconsider this indication, uh, and we started to use uh, the short the long peripheral canvas or short midlines, uh, how we call it. Uh, uh, for the hospital use, uh, for the same kind of uh, use uh, of the midlines uh, of uh, 15 years ago, we do, but we, we increase the cost effectiveness. Two problems. Uh, first, the cost, because uh, we actually use, uh, we currently use uh, uh, short mid, shorter midlines uh, uh, who cost uh, maybe one fourth uh, or one fifth of the traditional midlines. And also it was uh, a problem of confusing the device because uh, the way that the standard midlines were designed was very, very similar to PIC. Mm -hmm. 
So in spite of the fact that you will, uh, should read the name of the wing uh, or you should have a label, etc., there's always the risk of confusing a, a traditional midline with a peak. So these were the two factors. As a matter of fact, we had a lot of, uh, of uh, catheter-related thrombosis due to midline uh, exclusively because of improper use of the midline. And improper use uh, was not only a question of ignorance of the hospital policies, but also a question of confusing mm -hmm. uh, something which, uh, uh, when you look, uh, well, looks yeah. very similar to the, to the peak. No, the difference is a, a, a question of length, yes. a question of over the overall position of the, of the device. The mini midline has a length uh, typically uh, 8 to 10 centimeters, and the whole device uh, is contained in a vein of the arm of the forearm. Okay. Uh, on the contrary, the, the standard midline is something which is typically 20, 25 centimeters. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it starts in a deep vein of the, of the arm, not in the forearm, and the tip uh, is in a thoracic area. Okay. So. The midline starts at the arm and gets in the thoracic area either in the axillary tract, in the in axillary vein in the thoracic tract, the subclavicular tract, or in the subclavian vein.